everybody, welcome back to Telling Lies. Before we move on, I think last time when we left off, there were two videos that I didn't end up watching completely because I forgot to go back to the beginning. So if we can do that first, I think that would be great. Actually, I think one of them is right here, the one with the daughter. Not a princess? Gana! Yes. Mimon's very sick. I tried to go in a special bed, but mommy yelled at me. Oh, hey, that was actually relevant information. Laura's sick. That's what the doctor said. Are you going to tell me a bedtime story? She is so cute. I'm pulling my book now. Make one up. We end at Not a Princess. Rumpelstiltskin? Now, can I hear it? Just listen to her dad talk. <laughs> She's really screwing her face up. Not a princess. princess. Okay. So I think we've seen all of it now. This was actually important because it reinforces what we know already. Laura is sick by March 11th. March 11th. Well... I guess we can put this. She seems to be at the hospital, or at least at the very minimum, she's seen a doctor recently. Confirmed sick. She was getting sicker in November, and in March, she's confirmed sick. Me, mom. That might be a good one to search too, because that's what that's what uh, the kid calls her grandmother. Okay, the other one I didn't finish watching completely was the one where they were watching, I mean, Ava and David were watching the video together, the movie. And I think we can find that with one, two, three. One. Hey. Yeah, it's a fun idea. We get to have a night in together without having... Yes. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. I'll send you the link. Um, here's a bit of an extra twist. You turn on the captions, you turn off the sound, and we play the parts ourselves. Ah, so that explains why they were doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's just a thing that I invented called movie night karaoke. I'll be all the female roles and you do all the men, okay? Honestly, this seems very high effort. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sucker for Goldie Hawn romantic comedies from before I was born. Well, young Mel Gibson is my problematic fave. You guys getting ready? Ready? One. All right. This one, not nearly as useful, but we do get why they were doing that now. I don't know, feel like personally, I wouldn't really want to do that for a whole movie. Seems more like work than enjoying a movie, but hey, if... She's like a theater kid, right? She's a artist kind of girl, so she likes that kind of thing. Okay, so just to review here very quickly. Basically, what we know right now is there are... Well, there's David, who is at the center of all this, and he's an FBI agent, and he's moved away for work, which has to do with trying to take down a environmental group called Greenstorm, and he's doing this by infiltrating into the group itself, via a girl that he's met, called Ava. And meanwhile, all of that is going on, Emma, David's wife, has been taking care of her mom and her daughter and being really stressed out the whole time, which I feel like would definitely lead to marriage problems, but we haven't heard about a divorce yet. Oh, and the other big thing is that during the David's work, he's been sleeping with Ava, and she's pregnant too. Pretty sure that's not part of the duties for FBI agent. And then somehow, the cam girl ties into this too. We haven't seen too much about her, so as a fresh start, maybe that's what we want to focus on today. Although, if we go back to Princess... Can we? I know we had earlier. There were a few more clips I hadn't seen yet, so we could finish this off first. Yeah? February... 17. So this is after Ava moved in with David already. Who is this? Okay, my... Dada! Ah, it's probably another bedtime story. 
I can't see it. Little Alba? I don't know, I just can't. Mama bought me a nightlight, but I don't like it. Because it's pink. You don't like pink? Since today. Can you tell me a bedtime story? I think we saw another one of these clips before where he was telling the story, but we never got the pairing video for it. So this might have been one of them. Yeah, I'll get my princess book. Oh, hold up. Pick one. He's telling stories. These ones just really show that he does care for his daughter a lot. He makes time of day for her, even though he doesn't really have to. He could just be like, Oh, I'm really busy right now, daughter, Alba. Daddy's tired. I'm not gonna do this. But no, he doesn't. Yeah, and this helps out with the wife indirectly too, because if he's not telling her stories, then she'd probably be going to her mom. So I don't know. David, I'm still kind of 50-50 on what's really going on here. Yes, he's sleeping with Ava, and yes, maybe it's for his work, but does that... Does that really justify it, though? Because is my... Okay, if, if I were the wife and my husband told me I've been sleeping with another woman for work, I feel like that wouldn't go over very well with me. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't know about it either. It's not like my husband told me beforehand that I was going to do that. Ah, she fell asleep. Yes, and then Emma comes. I remember this. Did she just come home? She definitely doesn't look like she's been inside. Sure. Whoa, wait, she looks not okay at all. You know, they don't pay anesthesiologists the big bucks to put people to sleep. It's cause they can wake them up again afterwards. Off with him. Oh shit! Because I felt bad lying to him. But uh, screwing him, that felt like breaking a spell. David, why don't you just tell me what you've been doing over there? You're lying. You're a professional liar. It's literally your job. Yeah, and they trained you how to lie. Make me. God damn it. Oh wow. I thought this was gonna be a simple pairing video, but damn, she really- She fucked Ted! She fucked Steven! Oh my god! This is... Hold on, so February... 17. They broke it off, though. Because she felt bad lying to Steven. Not because she felt bad lying to her husband, that's a sad part. Emma breaks things off with... Steven. I assume. The name never came up, but anesthesiologist? Pretty sure we got it right here. Oh my god. He was right. <sighs> it's just a tough situation. Like, a long-distance marriage. It's hard to work, especially because they're both stressed out by things on their own sides. What's this one? November 20th. That is the latest one we have. And he said princess a lot of times. Too bad. Oh, who the hell is this? Sure. Yeah. Miss Putin. Oh, you mean um Rumple Stiltskin? Oh, his daughter. Okay. Is um is Mama still there? Yeah, he usually calls his daughter babe. Okay. I guess I'll uh speak to her later. Okay. Um so once upon a time, there was a girl 
who had long, long blonde hair that people said looked like gold. Okay. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, there was a girl called... Okay, so Emma, <clears throat> she has long blonde hair. And she really wants to marry the prince. But she's just a farmer's daughter, right? Well, one day the king comes riding through her village to water his horses. And she hears about it. And so she urges her father to go, go to the king and boast about his daughter and her long, beautiful hair. And while he's doing that, she quickly throws on some of her best jewelry. But when her father stands before the king, he gets really nervous and he misspeaks and he tells the king that his daughter can spin straw into gold. Again? The, the king is intrigued. He asks the girl to confirm, is this true? Can you spin straw to gold? But she wants to win the king's favor, so Emma says, Wait, yes, wait, wait, wait. Yes, why I are we hearing this story again? Gold from straw. But the king's no fool. So he decides to call her bluff and he proposes a challenge. What? If you can turn I'm confused. Why would he tell the same story to his daughter again? Unless... Wait, this can't be the other daughter. Ava's daughter was just born. She can't understand the story. What? Okay, wait. Why... Why is the daughter... Or why is the princess's name Emma now? That is strange. Maybe Alba just wants to hear the story again. Yeah, this is the same story. What... The hell? Pretty much. Well, I mean, that's a thing that kids do often. Can you tell me the story of blah 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 again? But by this time, their relationships must have changed. I feel like a divorce must have happened. Even though we didn't find any for the keyword earlier. So yes. And faster. We gotta go faster. He looks really tired though. Just look at him. His eye bags are like... Yeah, like that's... He looks devastated. Soldiers. Still trying to read the subtitles quickly here, just to make sure we're not skipping anything. Okay, so the girl Alba wants the prince to be named Daniel. Next day, the first spy returns and he tells her. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, okay, Daniel. Uh, so the imp. Because remember back in the other one where he was telling the story, I think she said, "Is it David? Is it Stephen?" Daniel, as far as I know, is Laura's husband. Mm. She interrupted the story a little bit here. Oh. Oh, he didn't get to finish it. Did he? Arrested and thrown in the deepest, darkest so surprised that he faints like right in front of her and Emma has him arrested and thrown in the deepest darkest dungeon and she lives happily ever after and the end. Okay. Um, good night. I love, I love you. Hey. Hmm. That's... I'm not sure what to think of this one. Very strange. I guess we should note it down anyway, just to have the date here. The date? This is the furthest video that we've seen so far. David retells fairy tale to Alba? Mm, if we can find the counterpart of this one, it might be interesting. No. What about Daniel? Oh, beautiful! Five records match. Results limited to five. It's this one. So it is Alba. Daniel. It's Daddy. Yes, Mama's Papa. Dada. Hold on, hold on. That's Mom handing it over to the daughter. It's Daddy. Dada, I miss you. 
I'm very tired. Can I have a bedtime story? I miss you, as in you are still not around here. Can you tell me Rasputin again? Oh, <laughs> she said it wrong. Yes, that one. Yeah, so she's just asking for retelling. No, she went to her room. Mama's not there. Mama doesn't even want to be around here. Like, she respects that her daughter might want to have to do with her dad, but she doesn't want anything to do with her husband. Let me give her a name. Emma, like Mama. And then Daniel, like Mama's Papa. She is so cute. These little kids. Is this really acting? Like, is she actually talking to somebody here? I wonder. I really do. I bet it's a new kind of acting too, because how often do you get told to just act in front of a screen and have long periods of silence? I imagine that's not something that even seasoned actors would do normally. Did we skip the Daniel part? I don't see it. We can get to it quickly if we go back to outside this... Yeah, Daniel, like Mama's Papa. So yes, Daniel is the... Um, is Laura's husband. I'm getting tired. Good night. Very sleepy now. Good night. I love you too, Dada. People's nicknames for each other might be a good search term too. Stuff like Mima, Dada, Mama. Alba calls Emma Mama, but Emma calls Laura Mama, M O M M A. So little distinctions here and there. Oh, wow. So David ran away. Hey, why is it- why does it keep highlighting, by the way? I don't know why it's doing that right now. Weird. Anyway, though. David ran away by November 1st, but he didn't run away back to his original home. That's the thing. Oh, might as well watch this one, too. Daniel. March 4th. Right before Laura's confirmed sick. You're too- Hello, dear. Did I call you or did you call me? Oh yeah, she's not doing so hot. Mm, no, she's at her tennis club. <laughs> Don't be silly. Texas backhand, they call her. My little champion's going for Allstate this time. Of course, she's gonna have to put the work in. You're too soft on her, Daniel. I think she's talking to David here. David, the new boy. Who was one before? Always brought her roses. Paul, that's right. He was always so polite. Always would hold the door open for her. I appreciate that. She's always bringing home these boys she meets at the hospital. And I tell you, every time there's something wrong with them, David seems dependable. He's handsome too. Reminds me of you when you were younger and wore those sharp suits. Would you like me to have my daughter call you when she gets back? Okay, that's a really weird thing to say. Assuming she's been talking to Daniel the whole time. Why would... So Daniel is Emma's dad. Why would you say, would you like my daughter to call you back later? I feel like she's talking to David. But even just now, the thing she was saying was like basically assuming that Emma just met David, which is not true. She's... she's sick. We probably can find the counterpart of this one with Paul. So a 120 clip in March. 120 clip in March. It is David. Paul. 
Hey, Laura. Um, I wasn't expecting you. Uh, you, you feeling okay? Is, is, is Emma there, Laura? Or... He doesn't really correct her. Emma hates Dennis. <laughs> It's David. It's David, Laura. He's even saying it like that, but... Paul. She doesn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Paul was a bad man. He's getting kind of short with her. This is a really scary disease, though. Forgetting the people around you. Who does it hurt more? The person who has this disease or the people around them? Okay. Hard to say. Um... No, no. No, it's fine. You, you know, you, you take care, Laura. Okay. Yeah, he can't talk to her anymore. There are some doctor's diagnosis between the 4th and the 11th, so I'll just leave it as the 11th for now. Even though by the 4th, we can clearly see that this was already happening. But we already saw another clip before where... Yeah, I think Laura accidentally called David Daniel. Not good, not good. These two are pairs. July 15th. Hey, seriously, why is it doing that? Oh, there we go. Probably had the Windows key pressed or something. So back here, July 15th. That is pretty late too. This is after he's been changed or whatever and he's talking to... Emma? Paul. Did we have a Paul here before? No, there's no search function. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Okay, Emma is cheating with him. Sorry, David. I thought you were projecting, but you were right. You know... He's completely shaved here. He's living by himself. This house, we don't recognize it. It's not Ava's place or the place he had when he moved in with Ava. And it's not his original place. He's talking to Emma. I think, according to the thumbnail. A lot of solemn talking. You know, we never talked about Paul. Is that the same Paul as the one from the other story? Emma's ex-boyfriend before David? Seems unlikely. It's mostly just Emma talking and him listening, but he looks really uncomfortable. So whatever they're talking about, it's not a happy topic. It's not something he wants to talk about in particular. Even here, his eye bags look pretty bad. Tired. A lot of shit's gone down, and probably by this time, everybody's found out about everything, I guess. Emma probably knows about Ava and the child and probably the FBI work didn't go so well either. FBI work not going so well would mean Greenstorm was never caught. Yeah, something like that? Or maybe they were. Maybe some of his friends, so-called friends in Greenstorm, went to jail. If he really got attached to them, then, you know, he wouldn't want that happening either. 
Okay, so I think this time we'll probably have to go to Emma's for the story. I was driving past. I saw his car parked on the street outside. I went straight into the apartment. He was grabbing you, and I feared for your life. What? Or more. Love you. I love you. Really? And that's it. Weird one if you don't have the counterpart, but we do. We do. She must be talking a lot here. July 15th. She says Paul so many times. Paul went to grab Emma? We don't know a Paul, right? We had a Peter. Peter was grabbing Ava. Peter made a video of Ava, but we don't know a Paul. I don't think. Here's... I feel like at this point, something must have happened with Laura, too. Whether it's being placed in an elderly home or something. David wasn't talking in the beginning either, so they're just kind of staring at each other here. After this one, we definitely have to go back and note down that... David apparently stopped Paul from grabbing Emma. She looks not okay though. Like, I don't think she looks okay. Alba has been playing happy families. That's your baddie house. She says you live there now with your baddie family. Oh no. Even <laughs> Alba knows. Kids are smart. Hey. Let's play dolls. This is Emma. She's a 25 year old nurse. Oh, she's young. Oh, look. Here's Paul. He's an accountant. He wanted to be a professional tennis player, but he was only the 10th best tennis player in his state. So sometimes he hits people to make himself feel like he still has that killer serve. Oh, so maybe it is her ex-husband or a boyfriend. Emma meets Paul at work when he comes in to have a torn wrist ligament looked at. This is David. He is a gorgeous young FBI agent. And Emma meets him at work too, where he is very chivalrous and steps in when a drunk patient in the ER calls her a bitch. So, Emma stops dating Paul. She's dating David now. But Paul keeps getting drunk and calling Emma up and telling her that he loves her and sometimes that he hates her. And so, David... Yeah, wait a second. How long ago did this happen? Recently? David starts watching over Emma's apartment. Every night after they go on a date, the handsome FBI agent sits outside in his car 
and watches over her while she sleeps. Okay, so... Oh, okay. Is it romantic? I was just gonna say, are you telling him this as in you're very creeped out right now? Or like, why are you telling him about how you guys met? Very romantic. David doesn't know that Emma knows this, and she doesn't tell him. But, you know, it does help her sleep at night. She feels... she feels safe. So, one night, after they go out for ice cream, Paul calls, says he wants to come over. And Emma tells him to come, thinking that David will scare Paul off, and that will be that. But when Paul turns up, David waits in the car. And when Emma goes to answer the door, Paul pushes his way in. He argues with her and he cries and he rants and he raves. And Emma gives him a hug because she's a nurse and that's what nurses do when men cry. And that's when David gets out of his car and comes into the apartment with his pistol drawn. And when he opens the door and he sees Paul and Emma, he doesn't look handsome anymore. He looks angry. At who? Paul steps back and he looks scared. And Emma looks scared too. And David fires his pistol and he shoots Paul in the lung. Oh my God. It takes Paul about 10 minutes to die. Emma could have helped stop the bleeding and maybe he could have lived, but David tells her not to. It was unlikely that Paul would have made it. And sometimes David points out it's better just to let the bad guys die. a guy bleed out together they get married that helps make things make sense even so Emma is sure that she'll be scared of David forever and ever and there's some stuff here about how I saw Paul holding you in the house. I thought he was hurting you. You waited because you wanted to save me. You wanted to be a fucking knight in shining armor. <laughs> you look so small on the screen. This was a weird one. Oh my god! Jesus. Gee! Hey! Oh, what are you doing? Kitty! <laughs> That's right! I never opened the Solitaire app before, and now they're forcing me to do that. 
okay, sure, we can do that. But I gotta write down some notes first. This is... July 15th. I think the key point for July 15th is not that... It's not that she's telling this story to him. But it's signifying that um, Emma is not afraid of David anymore. That's the main point of the story there. What does that mean? Does that mean that she is now okay with getting a divorce? She's now okay with leaving him? Oh, this highlighting thing is happening again. Hold up. What's going on? There we go. Okay, so I gotta make a new section here. Before. Yeah, she said this happened when she was 25. Okay, so when Emma was 25. Uh, pfft. David. David. Mm. Mm? How come I can't type anything? What's wrong with my typing today? Hold on. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought happened. I had a different language set up on my keyboard, so it wasn't working well in the game. Anyway, David met Emma at hospital. <sighs> David shoots Emma's ex-boyfriend, Paul. No, David kills Emma's ex-boyfriend, Paul. I think for the facts, that's probably enough. Emma's probably not 25 anymore, right now. Not sure how long ago it was, but it was just back when they met. Alba's pretty old now, too. It's gotta have been at least five years ago. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Does this imply divorce? Not sure. Oh, my- oh my god. What the hell is that? Hmm. I feel like I want to find these videos with dates further away, but we can't really control that, can we? Oh, what about, a uh, Solitaire? Is this just playing Solitaire? There's nothing good here. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we don't got time for this, alright? This is... Too intensive right now. Uh, no, we need a five. I don't got anything. Five, give me that four from before. Do I get anything if I finish this? I don't know. There we go. Oh, what am I doing? That doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, I know you can do that. Usually when I play, I don't like putting anything down until I have to. So even though we can put the two down there, I don't want to. <laughs> Is this really important though? I feel like I should be, you know... It's 3 a.m. though, I need a break. A cat just walked across my screen, my laptop. I need a freaking break here. There we go. Hmm. Now you know what? I'm done. I am done. We'll minimize it. <clears throat> right, back here. I suppose we can just watch this one. I'm not afraid of you anymore. What does that mean? February 16. I feel like liar might be a good keyword too. Emma calls him a liar here. A professional liar. 16, so just before Emma breaks things off with Steven. But we both lied about Paul. Hey, hon. Good, thanks. Alba went down early, so I'm just winding down. It's a lovely night. She might be oh, in a good well, mood because of Steven. Michigan has weather. That must be exciting. Oh. I don't know, why do pigeons always fly upside down over Detroit? <laughs> How do you do it? Well, 
these people you're with, they've known you for months now. And when they look into your eyes, they see a friend. So she knows about that part. So how do you return their smiles and laugh at their jokes when none of it is true? I feel like this is especially hard to understand for a nurse, somebody who's supposed to be compassionate towards everybody. And not in a fake way. But it's all a lie. Telling lies. Wow. If it's that easy, then you could do anything. <laughs> Have you slept with anyone? Oh my god. Of course not, no. No. Is she okay with that though, if that happened? But we both lied about Paul. That's Mama, I gotta go. I think he probably said no, but she knows that he's lying. There's two layers to this kind of thing. Does the cheating hurt more, or does the lying hurt more? It's hard to say. This is from February 16. Let's just say maybe... Emma, um, ask if David is cheating on her. Or, pff, she didn't actually say that. She said, are you sleeping with anybody? Maybe they have an understanding where that's okay, although I find it kind of unlikely. If I want to find the counterpart to this clip, what were some good keywords? Lying? February 16. No, we have some other ones here, but not the one I'm looking for. Smile? How do you return their smiles? Well, I got a February 17 one in the morning. Oh, this is the right one because it's the time zone difference. Hey, honey, how you doing? Always a lovely night in California. <laughs> Wanna hear a joke? Okay, why do pigeons always fly upside down over Detroit? Because there's nothing worth crapping on. What's she talking about here? How do you return their smiles? How do you be their friend? I make sure that it's true. I smile because I like them, and I laugh because they're funny. No, it's real. Damn, then that means he really does love Ava then, according to what he's saying here. Well then what about the cam girl, Melissa? It's not her name, but... We don't even know her name yet. <laughs> Have you slept with anyone? Ooh, shiz. Don't. We both lied about Paul. Fine. Don't bring Paul up. Paul is their dirty little secret. Is this Mike? August 29. She has a nice smile. Ava Martin, things are fully operational. 
He took away that Department of Justice sign in the back. What does it say in the back there? Something Campbell? Mitchell Campbell? Is that Mike's full name? She has a nice smile. Why would you want that record if the original is the best? Great. You sound like an expert. Oh, maybe he's rehearsing the music stuff with him. Music record? Because Ava likes music. So he wants to show that he's into music too, to impress her. And that's why she called him a music nerd. I only remember this because of my notes. <laughs> Why'd you tell me the vegan cookies were stale? What? Okay, well, you can leave the colorful details out of your report. Okay. Let's say... Mm. Whoa, whoa, what the heck? Come the full word just disappeared. What did that say before? His work? Where's my blinker? Uh, David reports to Mike. Mmm, stale cookies. Mirror, mirror on the wall. He's building a persona. And he's checking in that persona with Mike. I think it's what's happening. Yes, I called into the record store on Sunday, and we spoke for a bit. I told her I was new to the area, I wanted the Red Iggy Pop record, and she said they'd have to order it, but then she asked me why I wanted the remix when the original's the best. She oh, that's where they met, at the record store. Something like that. Not Omegle. <laughs> no, because I'm a collector. And I have a thing for colored vinyl. But honestly, I do prefer Pop's remix of Gimme Danger over the original. Because in the reissue, the loudness is fixed. And that sounds more natural and the vocals are more authentic. Great, you sound like an expert. And today, I attended a meeting at the Jasmine Center and uh, she remembered me from the record store. Yeah, and she said hi. We spoke in the back over some stale vegan cookies. You know, you're right. This is a good look on me. <laughs> Jasmine Center? I don't know. Colorful detail. He's creating situations to meet the girl naturally. Right, so at some point between 15 and 29, David visits, like, August something. David visits- where's my little blinker? I can't see where I'm typing. Ava at record store meets her again later at Jasmine Center for a meeting. Green store meeting? Jasmine Center. Oh, perfect. Or- wait, these are from later on. I mean, okay. These are probably green store meetings. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here at the Jasmine Center. We should start with the rally. The now, rally. We've been a lot of discussion on Slack, but first I want to say my primary concern is for the safety of all the members here. Now, I have some guidelines here from the council I can read out. John, screw the guidelines. Benson's group is going up against the Nationalists. Them and a bunch of Antifa, it's going to be a disaster. The Nazis want nothing more than to get people to fight them on TV. And Eric is so busy trying to convince everyone he's the real deal, he gives them what they want. Ava, you about to say something? No, no. I know you're friends with Eric. His heart is in the right place. He's just hot-headed. Okay, but maybe Eric is on to something, though. I mean, the Nazis, right? So decent people have to stand up to them. It... What? Does standing up involve throwing punches? Yeah, maybe it does. This is a law enforcement issue. Okay, they have permits. The police are protecting That's them. right, and that's exactly why someone needs to step up and do what the police should do, right? Because I'm sorry, all due respect, John, you're not going to stop these guys with a Facebook campaign. 
As a group, we abide by nonviolence. That's fine. And all I'm saying is, is I'm interested in putting my privileged white male able body where it can do some work, right? Because I heard what it was like in the Ann Arbor in the 60s, and you were there, John. Thank you, John. <laughs> we have to oppose the rally. We have to oppose the rally. David, we can't advocate for people putting themselves in harm's way. Okay, fine. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to have to excuse myself. It's David. fine, David. We'll talk another time. Okay. You didn't have to leave. That's okay, I wanted to. Is he... is that one of his belt buckle cameras again? It kind of seemed like it was... the position was a bit high. But on November 1st, that's pretty close to when Emma or uh, David got beat up at the rally. Interesting though, John. Is John the leader of Green Storm? Because... He very explicitly said they abide by non-violence, but yet... David keeps trying to... get them away from that. He wants violence. Green storm meeting? Well, we don't know. At Jasmine Center. David tr tries to get group to... I don't know. Accept violence, let's say. Is John important? Leader? I'm not sure. November 1st.